Okay, so this video is going to be looking at two dot points, identify neurons as nerve cells that are transmitters of signals by electrochemical changes in their membranes, and secondly, define the term threshold and explain why not all stimuli generate an action potential. So the first dot point we're going to look at is the identify neurons as nerve cells that are transmitted transmitters of signals by electrochemical changes in their membrane. So you recall that we had a look last lesson that nerves are made up of bundles of neurons, all of which have similar structures, including the cell body that houses the nucleus and the mitochondria, the dendrites that are around the outside that receive the messages from other neurons, the axon that helps transmit the message from the new, uh, sorry, from one neuron to the next, as well as other structures such as the myelin sheath and the nodes of Ranvier. What we need to look at now is how the messages get from one neuron to the next. And this occurs at the axon terminal in a space called the synapse. When the axon terminal of one neuron is stimulated, it releases a neurotransmitter, which is a chemical that crosses the gap and stimulates the dendrites of the adjacent neuron. Because we have the message being transmitted um, as in the nerves in the form of electricity along the neuronal membrane, and by chemicals from one neuron to the next, we have what is known as an electrochemical change that takes place. So neurons contain ions. Nerve impulses are electrical signals which are produced by the plasma membrane, also known as the cell membrane of the nerve cell. The human body as a whole has uh, an electrical charge which is neutral, meaning that we have almost the same number of positive and negative charges. It may help to think of a torch and how it works. Its battery separates electrical charges between two poles, the positive and the negative. This gives the two charges potential energy. This measure of the, the measure of potential energy is called the voltage. Voltage is always measured between two points and is called potential difference or simply potential. The flow of electricity from one point to another is called current and can be used to do work. Resistance is a hindrance of the flow of electricity provided by a substance through which the electricity must pass. A potential difference exists across every cell's plasma membrane. The side of the membrane exposed to the cytoplasm is negative, while the side exposed to the extracellular fluid is positive. So inside the cell is negative and outside the cell is positive. The difference on either side of the membrane results in a cellular voltage which is called the resting membrane potential and is measured at about 70 millivolts. It is written as minus 70 millivolts which indicates that the inside of the membrane is negative. The, at this point the membrane is said to be polarized. This arises because neurons contain ions or charged particles. Positively charged ions are called cations and negatively charged ions are called anions. When either of these is found in solution, the solution is then known as an electrolyte solution. We've heard of these Powerade, Gatorade, etc. being called electrolyte solutions, but this isn't what we're talking about at the moment. The cytoplasm of a cell and the extracellular fluid are both electrolyte solutions, but they differ greatly from each other. Cell membranes are impermeable to proteins and most organic phosphates, so these are kept inside the cytoplasm. The membranes are selectively permeable, however, to sodium, potassium, and chloride. And in this image, we can see that the green circles relate to the chloride ions, the blue, the sodium, and the pink, potassium. When the ion channel pores are open, ions can move from one side of the membrane to another. Each channel allows only a specific type of ion to diffuse through. So obviously we have a chloride channel, a sodium channel, and a potassium channel. And as we can see, the chloride and the sodium channels allow substances to move in, whereas the potassium channel mostly allows substances to move out. As we can see here, we have a difference in the uh, molarity or the amount of these different ions on either side of the cell membrane. So with chlorine in the cytoplasm, uh, we have seven millivolts, whereas in the extracellular fluid outside, we have 110 millivolts. That gives us our potential of minus 70 millivolts. 
potassium, we have 150 millimoles inside the cytoplasm and only five outside. This gives us a potential of minus 90 millivolts. And sodium, we have 15 on the inside and 150 on the outside, which gives us a potential of plus 70 millivolts. Now, we don't really need to know this. It's just helpful to know that different substances move um, in and out based on their concentrations. So changes in the environment of a neuron can affect the permeability of the plasma membrane to ions and therefore change the membrane's potential. Any environmental factor which causes such a change is called a stimulus. And as we know, neurons are highly reactive to any kind or many kinds of stimuli. However, they are quite specific in the type of stimuli that they respond to. A cell's membrane potential can change in response to an appropriate stimulation. A positive shift in membrane potential from minus 70 millivolts to minus 40 millivolts, for example, is known as depolarization. If the depolarization is strong enough, this flow of positive ions causes the neurons to generate a nerve impulse or an electro, uh, sorry, an action potential. And we'll actually be graphing an action potential and having a look at the different values that create these graphs. The action potentials are transmitted from neuron to neuron across small gaps called the synapse, which we looked at earlier, which are junctions between the end of one axon and then dendrites of the cell body of a receiving neuron. The movement is only in one direction, um, so from the dendrites to the axon. And at the synapse, chemicals known as neurotransmitters diffuse across the gap from one neuron to the next, causing the electrical impulse. So the electrical impulse itself doesn't actually cross the gap. The electrical impulse comes along, stimulates the, um, the axon terminal, to release the neurotransmitters, the neurotransmitters themselves then um, cross the gap and then they stimulate the dendrites of the adjoining axon. So in your booklet there is an arranging the steps activity and you can use this part of the uh, video to help you to complete that. So we start off with a stimulus uh, the membrane becomes permeable to sodium ions and they rush in. Inside, the cell becomes more positive, which begins to create an action potential. And if we have a big enough change in uh, voltage, we will then have the following take place. So the peak voltage causes a sodium channel to close and the potassium channel to open. So that goes back to the other image where we had a look at the different colored um, circles and whether they move in or out. So potassium ions then leave the cell, restoring the resting potential. So this depolarization next to the original action potential stimulates a new action potential as the sodium rushes in. The action potential continues in this way along the whole neuron. So it's just a continuous process in small parts along the um, entire neuron where we have this movement of sodium uh, rushing in, potassium rushing out, and it continues to move and changes the, uh, the voltage on either side of the membrane. So lastly, we need to look at the dot point to find the term threshold and explain why not all stimuli generate an action potential. This graph shows the changes in voltage that take place during an action potential. We'll be graphing this as part of the second resource investigation we'll be, be completing together in class. As you can see, time is located on the x-axis and voltage on the y. The time taken for an action potential to take place is extremely short as nervous impulses need to travel extremely quickly to send messages from receptors and then back to the effectors during a reflex arc to avoid injury. The threshold is the amount of positive change needed in the membrane potential uh, before an action potential is produced. The depolarization must reach a threshold which is at least 15 millivolts more positive than the resting potential of minus 70 millivolts. No action potential is produced if the depolarization is below this level. This is one of the reasons why not all stimuli generate an action potential. Each stimulus produces either a full action potential or none at all. Each action potential is a separate event. Therefore, a cell cannot produce another action potential until the previous one is completed, which is what we look at in that graph. And that's all for this video.